Today I'm taking a look at the Fesley FEP1000 Digital Piano. This beautiful digital upright is 88 keys weighted with 380 tones, different piano tones, 128 different rhythmic patterns, 88 demos in the music library, has an LED display screen, master volume, volume accompaniment, tempo control, transpose control, chord functions, accompaniment synchronization, keyboard split, split function, touch control, transfer metronome, has a USB capability, headphone jack, stereo jack, it also has Bluetooth functionality. So we're gonna dive into this keyboard today. I'm going to show you some of the features and demo some of the sounds um, so you can get a sense of the Fesley FEP1000 keyboard. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Warren McPherson. Over here at Piano List with Warren, we discuss everything piano and playing by ear. Today, we're gonna to review the Fesley Deluxe Edition Digital Piano. As you can see, it's a beautiful instrument, beautiful instrument. Uh, the team over at Fesley was kind enough to send me this keyboard, this digital piano to test out. And so this video, I'm just basically gonna walk you through some overview of some of the cool features and what it can do. So we're gonna dive into the features today. If you haven't hit that subscribe button and the notification bell yet, please do so. Little things like that really does help the channel grow and help me to continue to do gear reviews like this and bring you tips and tricks about learning piano by ear. So the Fesley Digital Piano, they have this nice wooden, by the way, the entire keyboard is wooden and they got this nice wooden stand right here. And I'm just going to put this up so I can use it with the manual as I'm going through that with you guys. And they got the user manual right here. Pretty handy, right? And then they also have, look at this, this nice slide out cover, right? So you can protect the keyboard. And it also comes with a nice purple design cloth that you can use to cover the keys and then close the piano. So you can really protect it from dust and you know, anything that will damage the, the digital piano. It comes with three pedals, as you can see on the floor. And the first, the, the, first, the, the right pedal is a sustain pedal, right? And the pedal to the far left is the soft pedal. Listen, it mutes the piano. So if you wanna practice quietly without having to turn down the volume or use headphones, the soft touch really does help. But also you can use it as a form of artistic tool. So if you're playing, you know, you're accompanying someone or something, and you wanna sort of then just immediately dull the piano, So it really creates a dampening so the piano sound is no more as bright. It gives it this dark, quiet, muted undertone. The middle pedal doesn't really serve as a function, at least one that I could identify. On Just like most upright piano, <clears throat> you'll notice they come with three pedals and sometimes the middle one doesn't really work. Oftentimes, like on a, a grand piano, the third pedal would be responsible for sustaining just the bass part of the piano. But on upright, not so much, and definitely not on this Fesley. So those are the pedals. Outside of that, now all the controls 
for this digital piano is here on the left, all the different buttons. And I'm gonna have to peep over like this. So right here at the front, you have two headphone jacks and they're using eight inch, eight inch inputs. And I really like that because if you are working with a singer or a guitarist and you guys wanna be able to listen to the piano using headphones, you have two input jacks. So you can listen to that. The other person is listening while you're playing. The headphone jacks disable the main speakers and the main speakers are right underneath the keyboard right there. Once you have anything plugged into the headphone jacks, disable those speakers. So that's what I'm using to record the piano sound right now. But you also have some additional inputs at the back. So you have a sustain pedal. In addition to the ones at the foot, you have a sustain pedal input. So if for some reason the ones at the foot, um, the, the, the ones that come with the, the Fesley piano, if they get damaged or whatever for a reason it's not working or if you just don't want to use them, you can add a, a sustain pedal. Now I've tested it. You got to make sure that you have a sustain pedal that has a polarity switch because I have a sustain pedal that does not have a polarity switch. And so it's flipped when I plug in my sustain pedal. And what that means is instead of it's sustaining the note when I play the piano. It sustains the note when I'm not playing. So it, everything is in reverse and you'd need a polarity switch to flip that back. But it has a sustain port. It also has an audio in. So you can take audio from an external source and you can run it to your keyboard and it comes out through the speakers. So if you're trying to play along with a backing track, and you want it to come through the speakers of the keyboard, you just take a, a quarter inch line out of your device and run it in there. And so that is the audio out. It also has a, a USB cable. Now this is a special USB cable that allows you to transfer MIDI data. It's the same cable that you use with printers to connect printers. Um, that's what you can use, but uh, you can always look up on like Amazon or, or Google for those types of cable. It also has an output, a quarter inch output. So if you wanna connect the keyboard to an amp, an external amp, or if you wanna send the audio to a mixer board or whatever, you can take a line out and send your keyboard audio in that direction. However, when you connect via that audio cable, it does not disable the speakers as the headphone jack. So you'll still, the speakers would still function and the audio will still be sent out to your external source. Now let's take a look at the different buttons and their function. So the middle first button is the power button. And something I'm gonna point out early because this sort of tripped me up when I just got started. The, the labeling for the button is below the button. So like, for example, the volume button, where you see it's labels volume and then the button above is the volume. It trips me up because I'm accustomed to the labeling of a button being at the top, right? <laughs> so when you have a uh, five, six button stack in a row, I was thinking, okay, it says beat here and then the button below it is beat, but that's not actually true. It's the button above the word beat that would be beat. So that's just something if you are used to keyboards that the labeling are on the top opposed to the bottom, that's something you need to reorient yourself with real quickly. So the power button is in the middle. That turns on your keyboard, turns it off. And once you turn it on, it's gonna land on your regular piano sound. Now the keyboard comes with over 300 different tones. So all the different instrumentation that you will need to sift through, you can get that here. I'm looking here. Yeah, so it comes with 380 tones, different sounds. So it covers all the different orchestral instruments, pianos, violins, flutes, woodwinds, brass, all that stuff. So you can check it out. There's a, there's a, um, indexed at the back that lists all the different tones and their number, so you can easily pull that up. So the, the piano, really good sampling. I really do actually like the, also the, 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 the 
hammer action. Right? So it's nice hammer. So it's not like super weighted. It's more like medium weighted. Good reflex, good bounce back. And then you have, beside the power button to the left and the right, you have the volume up, volume down. So if I go all the way, volume up at 64, that's what it's been showing on my screen. So that's with the volume up all the way. And then you can go all the way down. So right now it's on 31. See how quiet. So I'm gonna probably put it back up at, at say 50. Probably a little bit louder, 55. So those are the volume button. Above the volume button, you have the select. So from the left to right, you have select. Then in the middle, you have the stop start. And then to the right, you have select. So select plus on the left, select minus on the right. And the select is what we really use to change through different functions. So for example, if I wanna change my tone, I would press select plus. And now I'm on move from number one to number two different tone. If I keep on going, number three, number four. So you hear the tones changing, number five. So this, this is an EP, right? cool sounding EP. Let's go back to number one. And for that, I'll press select minus. And that takes me back to number one. So the select is how you skip through the different banks. The middle button says rhythm and that has our drum beats. And according to the manual, there are 128 different rhythmic patterns. So a lot of stuff to go through. So if I press rhythm and then I press the start start button, I got a cool beat going. And then I can press stop and the beat stop. Now with the drum beat, what if I want to change the volume because I can have the drum beat going and I can have my piano going. But they're, they, they're, the, the volume's operated by two different features. So here I am, I'm gonna start my drum beat. But what if it's not loud enough? Instead of trying to turn up the entire piano, which means the drum beat and the piano sound also increase, I can increase the drum beat by itself. So with the drum beat going, I press tempo, and then using my select plus or minus, I can increase or decrease the tempo, the, the, the volume. So I just turn up the beat. And then I can turn it back down. Forgot to press tempo, and then I can turn it back down. There we go. Now below the tone button, you see where it says dual, and that means you can layer sounds together. So once you press that dual button, and then then I have a piano and strings going. can 
change it. So what if you don't want strings? Again, press the dual button. And then you're going to press the select plus or minus, and that will give you different tones. So now it's no longer a string, it's a different tone. Let's keep going, see what I can come up with. It's some form of sustain, but it sounds nice with that piano. So that's what the dual does. Beside the dual, you have the split button. And split simply means it allows two people to play the piano within the same register almost. So let's demonstrate it. So when I go split, so now when the split is on, listen what happens. So the piano splits from the middle E right here. Then it goes back low. So this F's are the same. So now I can come down here and I can play. Woo! <laughs> I forgot I just split. And And then if you also want, you can change the split point up here. So right now we got piano going, but you can change the upper split point, right? So split, and then what if I select a different tone, right? So I can go. So you can change the split point. If you and a family member wants to play something, you and your son, you and your daughter, or a friend, you can split that and do so with, with the keyboard. Beside the split, you have the, um, or above the split to the right, you have the demo. And the demo is just songs that, are, that can, comes with the keyboard. And it comes with 88 different demo songs in the library. So if I click demo, So some classical tunes there. And like I said, there's 88 different types and styles of song. So you can check that out. Now the keyboard also gives you the ability to record yourself. And you notice you'll see two buttons. One says record and the other one says record play. So the record play is where you get to play back what you've recorded. So I'm going to hit the record button and then I'm going to hit play.
And now let's click that record button. So that's what I just recorded. Now this also come with a cool accompaniment feature. So once you have the beat going, so if I click on rhythm and then I click on start, you'll get a beat. But then if I come here and I click on, if I click on the button that says integrate, then that, listen what it does. So click integrate, now on, listen. So sort of like it will play chords for me. And I'm gonna click start. So once I press any button, a full on accompaniment band starts to go. Here we go. Single finger. Now, if you press single finger, it assumes the chord is major. So if you want to change the quality of the chord, you can just play full triad. Check this out. So this is what a 1625 would sound like. So I'm just gonna play the key of C. Here we go. Now I'm gonna go to A minor. minor to the five So you can have a lot of fun with that accompaniment right there. So you can see all these different features that the Fesley Digital Piano can do. This is an amazing keyboard, amazing digital piano. It's stylistically beautiful. It fits nicely in the home. It is not too bulky and it's actually super light. It looks heavy, but it's not heavy. It's easy to put together. Right, so you know, there's not a lot of pieces you gotta screw on together. Personally, I like this board. I would recommend it for anyone who is a beginner or an intermediate looking for a stationary um, a digital piano that fits nicely in your house. You don't have to buy any stand because it comes with everything. Beautiful keyboard. There are some links in the description that you can check this out um, and see the prices that it's going for. It is super inexpensive. Um, great prize for Christmas around the corner. You can get this for a family member. So I love this keyboard. And it does a, a lot more stuff, you know, and the manual, very thin. So you can go through this thing in 20 minutes and figure out how everything works. So that's the overview of the Fesley Dulux edition of, of their digital piano. Definitely would recommend this keyboard. I love the sound, I love the feel, I love the look, and it can do so much. So click the link in the description, view it on Amazon or the other different places that you can find this keyboard. And again, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I post more gear reviews like this or tutorials to help you get better at playing by ear. All right, so until then, keep practicing.